tasting menu and today we're putting a fresh spin on some fall favorites with chefs who know the flavors and foods that are hot right now. I am so blown away by my next guest. She began to explore her love of cooking while in college when she also discovered she was going blind from a rare inflammatory disorder. She persevered learning braille, how to walk with a cane, and how to cook as she lost her sight. She launched her culinary career after winning season three of Master Chef <laughs> and kept soaring, going on to open two successful Houston restaurants, both James Beard Award semifinalists, The Blind Goat and Sin Chow, a venue that food critics have called a revelation. Today, she's sharing one of her favorite go-to fall dishes found in her New York Times best-selling cookbook, Recipes from My Home Kitchen, and it's the ultimate comfort food, one introduced to her by her mother. Please welcome the incomparable Christine Ha! Yeah. Oh, I've been following your story, and I, I could just cry. Um, tears of joy <laughs> to see all of the success that you've had. Does it, is it surreal? It is. I think it's, you know, it's been 10 years since I was on MasterChef and sometimes looking back, like, you know, I just kind of do the daily grind of like, oh, making sure the restaurants are running and doing whatever I do. But sometimes I reflect with my husband. I'm like, can you believe that, like, how much life has changed in the past 10 years? It's yeah. pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy, <laughs> especially when you look at, you know, what you were facing and yeah. not knowing what the future yeah. was for you. Yeah. I mean, I was losing my vision. Um, I, had, I had just like throughout my 20s and then I had just gone back to school for uh, creative writing and I didn't think like cooking was just a hobby for me yes. and I learned it and then I was like feeding my friends and my family and there was something really joyous about being able to create something and yes. making other people happy with it wow. and um, I, you know I kept at it and then I was losing my vision so I had to reteach myself how to start over with a knife how to deal with a hot stove with less and less vision and Never would I have thought that I would have gone on television and won ah. a competition and then opened restaurants. That is amazing. Pretty exciting. <laughs> well, this beautiful recipe is inspired by your mom. Yes, it is. So this is, uh, today we're gonna make a Vietnamese chicken curry and Vietnamese is called gari ga. And we see the picture of you together <laughs> here. Oh, look at that it's little It's a very, uh, very fall comforting dish okay. because if you think of curry, you know, you think of stew, mm. very homey, yeah. the aromas of it. And this is very versatile, super easy. Okay. Like you can do it with chicken. The, um, the aromatics are very simple. So I can something... smell everything yeah. now. So I have That's the very chicken comforting. here with me already marinated. Yes. So here we've got, I like to use dark meat because it's more tender. So of I'm, course. A, you know, chicken and uh, I'm a chicken, chicken thigh thighs leg person. Girl. Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> so we have it already marinated. So you should be marinating for at least 30 minutes okay. uh, in some garlic powder, onion powder, and some curry powder mm. and salt and pepper as well. So that'll be sitting there. And I have some sauteing already. Yes, so I do too. So here we already have it cooked because of course, magic of television, yeah. we don't have that much time. But we have the chicken here kind of um, heating up and browned with some aromatics of onion and garlic and more curry powder already. Okay. So now we're gonna break down some of the vegetables okay. and aromatics and put those in and then we'll get to cooking. All right, let's go for it. I'm following you. All right, so here we have lemongrass. Do any of, have any of you cooked or eaten with lem uh, eaten lemongrass before? Yes, okay. it's so popular right now. Yeah, so usually you go, you know, you smell like soaps and lotion that yeah, have yeah. lemongrass. So you have, it's like that citrus smell, but lemongrass comes like this, it comes in stalks. You don't want to eat this because it'll be very woody. So okay. what we're doing is actually, we're going to cut off the stalks. And in some cases, we're just, um, you know, you can chop it up and use it, but we're actually just going to do what is called bruising the lemongrass stalks. Okay. So that'll release some of the citrus oils coming out, so I'm also cutting off the root end. You're gonna cut the root end off? Yes. All right. Now, obviously, people always wonder how you navigate the kitchen, how you <laughs> navigate. Everything has to be extremely organized, so I, you know, w set everything up the way I want it to be, and I know where everything is. So you have to be that way in a professional kitchen as Period. well. Period, right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So here I've just kind of cut them down into, like, segments, and then I'm gonna take the back of my knife and then just kind of bruise it like this. And this will start releasing some of the citrus oils from the lemongrass. We'll just throw them in here okay. uh, into the pot as well, and then we'll um, move it okay. onto the fire. Now, and then do add you some find the that your here. sense of smell is heightened? I know that's a common question that people ask of people who have um, lost their sense of sight and other things. 
Uh, I wouldn't say that my other senses are heightened per se, but I, because I have one less sense, the sense of sight to distract myself, I would say that I am more in tune to my other senses. Ah. So my sense of touch, my sense of smell, taste, I think that's what helped me on MasterChef was kind of be, paying more attention and being keen on those remaining. You're like a superhero. Senses. You got to pay more attention to these things. So you have, I also have with me um, the carrots and um, celery. Yes, yeah, so we're going to take the vegetables and dump that in okay. to the pot as well. Nice. Smells so, so good. Oh, and then I'm gonna add my liquids as after, and then I'll cut the potatoes afterwards. Okay. So here we've got some chicken stock. Mm -hmm. Nice. Like the goulash we made earlier, some dishes just are home, and this is one of them. I haven't even tasted it yet, but just the aroma, Aromas, everything yeah. is just so beautiful. What do we have here? We've got fish sauce, which this oh. one was very pungent. So you don't, you know, I can eat this and straight up, but it's very. <laughs> what, what are you trying to say, Christine? What are you trying to we say? We should go shot for shot on fish sauce. We can go shot for shot. You're my bestie now. I love it. You can add a little bit of it into anything like Chef Eddie's like goulash can probably use. Yes. You know, he used Maggie sauce, and yes. that's like something I grew up with as well. So you, fish sauce will add a little bit of saltiness and umami, and if you use just a little bit like in your bolognese, in your oh. Texas chili, like really? it'll really coax out like. A an interesting oh, nice. flavor that many people won't be able to pinpoint if you use just a little bit, but it's and a lot of And we just poured milk. in our coconut milk. Coconut milk. Another, let me tell you, I love you because this, again, a big, you know, living in New York, I, I started to cook a lot of Caribbean recipes, coconut mm. milk, a big part of that yes. as well. And then here I've also got coconut cream. So oh. Th this will add a little bit more We're trying to get us never to go thickness. home. We just stay at your house forever. Okay, coconut cream, we add that. When we come back with Chef Christine, we will finish off this beautiful chicken dish inspired by her mother as we celebrate fall recipes. Let me chop my potatoes here. We'll be right back after the break. Welcome back, Sam fam. We are back with Cameron's tasting menu and what's fresh for fall. We are learning to make delicious meals and upgrade some fall recipes into our diets. And Chef Christine Ha is here sharing one of her family fall meals with us. It's a Vietnamese chicken curry. And before break, we marinated our chicken, we browned it, and we started to really smell the aromas of the curry and bring it to life. Christine, you know, I'll tell you, we were in the commercial break and so many people are inspired by the fact that you've lost your sight, but you have found your voice <laughs> in this world of cooking. Thank you. Um, I'm sure you hear from people all the time who are inspired by you. I am, and you know, I, I set out to not necessarily be an inspiration because I feel like I just live my day and I'm just me, mm -hmm. but when I hear stories of people going through their own challenges, and it doesn't have to be losing your vision or, or anything like a physical disability. It could just be like, yeah. you know, death of a loved one or yeah. just, you know, a child being bullied and they tell me their stories and they're like, you gave me the courage to try oh. out for the soccer team or you gave me the courage to learn how to cook for my family when I was depressed. Oh and my God. Those things, those sorts of stories really motivate me. I love that, I love that. So you're gonna take us through finishing up this recipe inspired by your mother. Yes, that's right. So this, um, now we, you know, it's been cooking for a while and this, you know, dish doesn't take that long to cook, okay. which is why I, I do like, like 20 it. minutes to simmer. Yeah, okay. and then now we're gonna make a cornstarch slurry. So I actually like to use the broth from the stew to make oh. the slurry. So I have cornstarch in here. I wanna thicken the broth up more, but mm -hmm. using the liquid from the stew will not dilute the taste of it. Oh, so right. you know, sometimes so you get that richness water, going. Yeah. Yeah, you will dilute the taste that you've been working so hard okay. for. So I'm just gonna add some of the liquid from the stew, mm -hmm. stir it up. I can feel that the cornstarch is sort of um, dissolving in here. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pour it back into the stew, let it and cook And you just water. said you feel, so in the bowl, you feel the weight of it in the bowl? I feel the resistance. Wow. You know, so when, now that it was kind of smoother, I know that the cornstarch is starting to dissolve into the liquid. And then I'm just stirring that into Okay, well, I curry. need to feel more because mine's not <laughs> the you know? I'm going to have to hang out with you because let me tell you, it is masterful, a master class in the fact that cooking is many things. And some people say, okay, you've got to see it. And it, clearly that is not the case. No, it's, a very, it's a very sensual experience, use, meaning like multi-sensory using yeah. all of your senses. So for me, I didn't think that I would be able to cook again after losing yeah. my vision, but it was something I love to do. So I found ways to adapt and to keep doing it. I know that right now also, 
Another thing on your list, you serve as the culinary envoy with the State Department? <laughs> yes, that's right. Uh, I've gone overseas to uh, represent like the U.S. and teach like women entrepreneurs from other countries how to start their own businesses and food and other people with disabilities how to cook. You do it all. So you, you garnish this with a little cilantro and lime. I know yes. you're a bread woman like myself, so you have your baguette. I do. So this curry can be eaten in many ways. You can eat it over rice. You can eat it with noodles. Uh, you, and the way, you know, the French influence from uh, in Vietnamese cuisine is we also eat it with the French baguette. So you would take, you know, rip a part of the baguette mm -hmm. uh, and then dip it into your stew. So I'm just kind of garnishing with some sprigs of cilantro, yeah. a little bit of lemon juice. Now, I love, again, you say dipping it, you have Texas roots. We say sopping. Come on. Sop it. Sopping it up. Trying to be a little no, uh, elegant, elegant here well, for no, you. My poor nephew, who's 25 years old, he called me on FaceTime with friends, and he said, Aunt Tamara, isn't sopping a word? And I said, yes, it is. All the kids in his, wherever he was, couldn't believe it. So, Isaiah, you won the bet. Aunt Tamara says sopping on national TV. <laughs> and let me tell you, this flavor, Christine, is incredible. Oh, thank you. Mm. My friend, congratulations on everything. Chef thank Christine so Hall. Thank you, everyone. You can find more of Christine's recipes in her book, Recipes from My Home Kitchen. Guess what? Everybody in the studio can start cooking Christine's dishes tonight because you're all going home with a copy of her phenomenal cookbook. Christine, you are amazing. You're my hero. I love you. I love you.